Hi everyone! In this episode of Versus, I'm going to be pitting two medium-sized multi-role ships up against one another. The two ships in question that I'm going to be looking at over the course of this video are the Cutlass Black and the Standard Freelancer. Not many small ships offer multiplayer gameplay, and most of the large ships are greatly impaired if you attempt to fly it with less than an optimal number of crewmen. But medium-sized ships represent the best of both worlds. They can be flown by a solo pilot with little to no impact on the ship's overall efficiency, or if you want, can also be operated by a small crew. This allows the player to be able to experience solo or multiplayer gameplay while using the same ship. They also have a good portion of the same onboard amenities that come standard to a large ship, like internal cabin space, habitation rooms, extra storage, some kind of cargo bay, and any other number of facilities provides this while retaining a lot of the versatility and freedom of movement that the smaller ships have. When it comes to the components for medium-sized craft, this game, for the most part, adheres to the rule of three, meaning that generally speaking, three small components will equal one medium-sized one, just as three medium-sized components will equal one large. And so as you upgrade from a small to a medium-sized vessel, you're going to see a significant increase in the ship's available energy reserves, its shield strength, firepower, and in the distances that I can travel. The Cutlass Black is manufactured and distributed by Drake International. This corporation has started to foster a reputation that over the years has fallen by the wayside, and continues to slip a little further with every new scandal that comes to light. After having lost its bid for a military contract, the Cutlass was redirected to the civilian market. Drake found some success in selling a police craft and a first responder variant on the Cutlass, but a majority of their sales comes from the Cutlass Black. This ship has found itself a very niche audience that seems to consist primarily of the less reputable denizens of the UEE. The Drake philosophy is to provide a practical yet inexpensively designed craft that offers more in terms of firepower and performance, but less in the areas of frills, amenities, and personal safety. And although Drake continues to vehemently deny that they're intentionally marketing the Cutlass Black to criminals, they still refuse to do background checks on their buyers, and the Cutlass Black accounts for nearly two-thirds of all the ships that are used by known piracy groups. Drake ships tend to have an unfinished look to its interior, and does away with such frivolities like escape pods and extra hull plating. But as a result, they can be faster, more agile, and can handle being outfitted with an extra allotment of weaponry. In addition to the Cutlass Black, there's two other models that are available to the civilian market. These other ships are variations which are based on the same Cutlass chassis. This includes the Cutlass Red, which is the equivalent to a spacefaring ambulance, and the Cutlass Blue, which ironically is a police vessel that's been purpose-built for bounty hunting. The Cutlass dates back to the first wave of original pledge ships, and it's gone through some major changes since then. These changes include being given a complete overhaul of both its interior and its exterior elements. Its weapons loadout has been given a substantial buff, and it's even had some completely new features added to it, like the pair of side doors that are found in the back of the ship, while other redundant features have been completely removed, like the docking collar and the front escape hatch that used to overlook the port side wing. Its original design has always been described as being a hybrid that falls somewhere between a fighter ship and a cargo hauler, and that's exactly how it's remained, with nearly all of its features being centered around this purpose. The Cutlass Black has four size 3 forward-facing weapon mounts that are slave to the pilot's control, and it has an additional pair of size 3 weapon mounts that are located on a dorsal turret that's manually operated by a gunner. It comes stocked with eight size 2 missiles and eight size 3s. It also has a single utility mount located along the back of the ship and just above the rear cargo ramp that comes installed with a size 1 tractor beam. This feature is going to add an entirely new layer of utility and extra gameplay options for the crew to work with. In case you were wondering what kind of things you could use this for, imagine a tow cable. Now imagine a laser version of it which can automatically attach itself to nearly anything. And based on that mental image, you could start to see what kind of potential that this feature holds for future gameplay. 
So far, the only limitations associated with it are going to be the size and or weight of the thing in question that you're going to be trying to drag along with you. It's also been confirmed that the tractor beams are going to be able to move small mineable asteroids, cargo boxes of all sizes, and it can be used as a means to grab and pull floating debris into the back of the cuddy. Or it can be used to tow a small vehicle, snub fighter, or even another ship. The ship's interior is partitioned off into two sections. The forward portion is where the flight deck is located, as well as four lockers, two beds, the entrance to the turret, four weapons racks, and several additional storage compartments that could be found lining the walls. The living area is surprisingly spacious feeling, and separating it from the rest of the ship is going to allow the cargo bay to be vented without having to worry about also decompressing the flight deck. This is going to protect the pilot, the co-pilot, and anyone else who's currently sleeping in the bunks. The aft portion of the ship is where the cargo grid is located. This is also where a majority of the ship's components could be accessed from. Flanking the back ramp are a series of six additional jump seats that can be used to safely secure any auxiliary crew members when jumping. It also has two side doors that can slide open to provide easy access for a strike force to exit and be able to return to the ship from. And it has a rear ramp that could be used for unloading a vehicle. Its cargo grid is big enough to hold 46 SCUs worth of goods. The rear portion of the ship widens out to the point where it can fit anything from a pair of grav levs to a cyclone. But the grid can also be used to lock down any scavenged items that are small enough to fit onto it. This ship is perfectly capable of being handled by a single pilot, who will have access to four out of the six guns if they're flying alone. But it also has room for a co-pilot, a turret operator, and has enough seating in the back for an additional six people. But it should be noted that this ship only has two beds. So out of the full crew, only two people are going to be able to use this ship at the same time as a place to save their position and log in and out of the game from. This is only going to hinder the amount of people who can remain on board and act as the dedicated crew for longer journeys. For shorter trips that are going to require you to make at least one quantum jump, you're still going to be able to bring a maximum sized crew of nine with you. If you bring any more people than that, then they're going to have to take their chances when you go into and out of quantum. Or if your trip isn't going to require a jump at all, then you can fill the ship up with as many people as the cargo bay and the life support systems can handle. The Freelancer series is produced by MISC, which is an anacronym for Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern. They're known for creating a range of heavy industrial ships like the Starfarer and the Gemini, but the vessels that they're best known for bringing into the Empire are the Hull series. These ships make up the backbone of the shipping and heavy freight industry. The Hull Sea has been credited as being the most common ship in the verse. This so far is a very unsubstantiated fact but it's something that's been endlessly parroted throughout rest stop taverns and cargo depots alike from one end of the galaxy to the other. The unexpected popularity of the MISC ships among the Xi'an has led to a rather unlikely business relationship, and MISC is currently the only human corporation to have signed a Lend-Lease agreement with them. Since then, rumors have been spreading that MISC's next move is going to be for them to release a new lineup of spacecraft that'll begin to incorporate Xi'an thruster technology that's been adapted for human ships. They've already released several vessels that incorporate some form of Xi'an technology in it, which includes the multi-directional thrusters in the core, and the unique skin of the MISC Razor that behaves like a fuel scoop. The Freelancer follows the MISC high concept of ships that are constructed to be singular of purpose, and to perform that task to the best of its ability. It was initially marketed as being an efficient long-haul merchant ship for private enterprises, but creative pilots have found a number of additional uses for it. Since being singularly focused on being able to efficiently haul a good amount of cargo, especially for a ship of its size, has applications that goes far beyond being used as a simple freighter. And as a result, it's become much more multi-purpose in function than it was originally intended to be. The Freelancer was also part of the original first wave of ships to be offered by Star Citizen, and it's also one in a series of vessels that belongs to the same lineup. This family includes the Freelancer Misk, which is a missile boat variant, the Freelancer Dur, which has been purpose-built for exploration, and the Freelancer Max, which has been specially outfitted for cargo hauling. 
The Freelancer is also the namesake of a Chris Roberts game that harkens back to the days of the Wing Commander series, and as such holds a special place among the Star Citizen lineup of ships. This is a lineage that's only shared by a small number of other vessels, like for instance the Hornet, whose origins also dates back to the days of the Wing Commander franchise. For the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to keep focus on the standard Freelancer model, which is the stock version of the ship and is the one that all the other Freelancer variants are based on. For weapons, it has four size 3 guns that are mounted onto a bespoke turret, which is controlled by the pilot, and it has a rear mounted turret that's armed with two size 2 guns. It also comes equipped with four size 2 and four size 3 missiles. The flight deck has four seats that are arranged two at a time in a row with one in front of the other. The front two seats are used for the pilot and co-pilot. While the two seats in the back can be used as auxiliary stations for additional crewmen to operate. Located just behind it is an airtight doorway that leads further into the cabin of the ship where the living section is located. The living area is located in between the docking section and the flight deck. This is where the ship's four beds are located, which can all be used to log in and out of the game from. Along the walls, an auxiliary exit point from the ship. Opposite from it is an engineering station, and flanking the door that leads to the docking collar is a bathroom shower combo and a food prep area. The food station looks like it already has a microwave and a cooler installed, and has a number of empty slots that could be used for further expansion. All these amenities are going to add to the survivability of the crew allowing them to be far less dependent on having to use a landing zone or a space station, which would generally be used for logging out of the game or for satisfying the crew's basic hygiene and nutritional needs. Located midway into the rear of the ship is where the docking collar can be found. This is going to be used to connect to space stations and other ships that also have docking capabilities. A smaller cargo grid is set into the floor of this room that could be used to lock down an additional amount of cargo or anything else that can fit into the space. The docking collar is located dead center on the ceiling. Two airtight doors seal this section off from the rest of the ship, which connects it to the rear cargo bay and the flight deck. These doors not only create choke points for shipjackers to have to contend with, but also prevents the entire ship from being vented if the docking collar is open while in deep space. Located in the aft section of the ship is the cargo bay. The Freelancer has a hauling capacity of 66 SCUs worth of cargo space which is also enough room to comfortably fit several gravlev bikes, tumble rangers, or a few grey cats. The main thing that pleased me to no end was hearing a developer talk about the runners that extend down from the bottom of the rear turret, and that they weren't supposed to hang down like they do from the ceiling of the ship. Which is great news because those runners have a tendency to get in the way whenever you attempt to park a vehicle inside of the cargo bay. Especially when it comes to variants like the Max that can handle carrying larger vehicles and those runners are the only things right now that's keeping the Max from being able to load a rover inside of it. The Freelancer provides accommodations for four permanent crew members, which includes a bed for each of them, seats for when you go into quantum travel, and individual stations located in the flight deck for each crew member to work from. When it comes to differences in their component loadout, the Freelancer has double the number of shield generators, fuel intakes, and fuel tanks, as opposed to the Cutlass which only has one of each in these various categories. However, both ships have two medium-sized coolers. But when it comes to quality, each ship by default comes stocked with C-grade civilian class components, so the real difference between their loadouts is in quantity, but not in quality. Both ships provide a way to access all the components from within the safety of the ship. Another handy feature of a medium sized ship is that their size 2 components are still small enough to be manually swapped out for a replacement. This is unlike the smaller ships that will require you to have to go outside of the ship in order to do your repairs, or large components that are going to be too big to be removed by hand. The Freelancer has a longer range when it comes to traveling at normal SEM speeds. This is due to its dual hydrogen tanks and twin fuel scoops. The Cutlass is going to be a bit more limited in its range having only one medium sized scoop and one hydrogen tank, but it has the same size and number of quantum drives, and quantum fuel tanks that the Freelancer has. So it's going to have the same long range capabilities, but a lesser capacity to travel after it's reached its destination. 
Both ships have four size 3 weapons hardpoints that are slave to the pilot's control, which means that each ship's pilot has access to the equivalent firepower of a saber. But the freelancer's guns are mounted onto a turret, which provides them with a limited amount of gimbaling without having to reduce the size of the guns in the process. Whereas if you want to gimbal the Cutlass's guns, they're going to have to be downgraded from size 3s to size 2s, which is going to be a noticeable reduction in its overall DPS. Both of these ships have a manually operated turret that's mounted onto the dorsal portion of the ship. However, the Freelancer's turret faces more towards the rear of the ship, while the Cutlass's is more forward facing. The two guns that are mounted onto the Cutlass's turret are size 3s, while the Freelancer's turret holds a pair of size 2 weapons. When I first operated the Freelancer's turret, I initially began to dispute the whole forward facing rear facing argument, since you can see the front of the ship just fine. But it wasn't until we were in combat that I began to notice that every time the pilot was engaging an enemy, the target would dip down just below my ability to get a visual on them, and I was constantly asking the pilot to tilt their nose down so that I could also get the enemy in my sights. Although the turret can fire forward of the ship, its placement favors firing on the enemies that are trying to sneak up on you from behind, and its main purpose is for getting pursuing ships off your tail. I never had a problem with tracking and firing on an enemy when operating the Cutlass's turret, this is because it provides an optimal view of the area in front of the ship. And when you use the turret to target the same enemy that the main guns are firing on, its pair of size 3s when combined with the main gun tends to greatly increase the amount of DPS that you're putting out. The Cutlass has a noticeable lead over the Freelancer when it comes to maneuverability. The Cutlass has a faster top speed, a significantly quicker ability to pitch, yaw, and roll, and has a slightly faster X, Y, and Z acceleration rate. It's designed to be a more aggressive ship, so it has to be more responsive in its handling. It also has the ability to pitch its engines, that gives it a degree of VTOL control, which in turn is going to make it more stable when traveling within an atmosphere. This feature is a necessity to have in order to counter its very non-ergonomic design that seems to thumb its nose at the very notion of aerodynamics, with its pear-shaped body, tiny wings, and oversized behind. The Freelancer has a tendency to oversteer if you're not being mindful of what you're doing, and it could take some getting used to, especially if you have more experience with flying smaller ships. But this isn't a real issue, it's just a difference in handling. And after you spend some time with the Freelancer, you'll get used to it just as you would any other ship. Overall, the Freelancer is the big rig of the skies, and its handling is appropriate to that description. But its weight is more evenly distributed than that of the Cutlass. It has more of a missile-like shaped chassis, and has a better wingspan per body ratio than the Cutlass does. All these factors make it more aerodynamic, and allows it to handle more fluidly while traveling within an atmosphere. Having a docking collar has become an increasingly unique option to be found amongst medium-sized ships, and it's lucky that this feature survived the Freelancer's rework. This is unlike the Cutlass, which used to have a docking collar located in the floor of the ship but it was removed in exchange for two new sliding doors and to clear up more space for it to carry cargo and vehicles in. The Freelancer can carry 20 more SCUs worth of cargo than the Cutlass, having a capacity of 66 as opposed to the Cutlass's 46. The cargo bay for the Freelancer is long and has a narrow cylindrical feel to it, while the Cutlass's cargo space is wide and more squat looking in appearance. The Cutlass's cargo bay may be shorter in length, but its increased width makes the space within it a lot easier to navigate around, and this allows it to carry larger vehicles than the standard Freelancer can handle. The Freelancer provides accommodations for double the number of permanent crew members than the Cutlass does, and by a permanent crew, I mean that the ship will have bunk space provided for each crewman, so that their attendance on that ship can persist through multiple game sessions. As a bathroom and a shower facility so you can freshen up before reaching your destination, and a food station that you can grab a quick drink and a bite at whenever the need arises. The Cutlass, however, can support a larger active crew, which means that everybody on board won't have a bed to log in and out of, but each member of the crew will have a station to work from, or at least have a place to sit down at while quantum traveling. So in the end, the Cutlass can hold more people total, but the Freelancer can have a larger standing crew that can be stationed in it on more of a permanent basis. The differences found within these two ships also extends to the types of amenities that they provide. The Freelancer promotes crew survivability by having a shower, bathroom, and a food station, 
all of which are going to allow the crew to operate for longer periods of time without having to rely on some outside source to satisfy these needs. While the Cutlass has additional storage space, gun racks, and lockers, all of which are going to help to promote combat gameplay, which in turn is going to increase the crew's chances of surviving through a battle. And lastly, in comparison, I want to talk about the vehicles that each ship can transport within its cargo bay. Generally, when I talk about how many vehicles a ship can carry, I tend to only mention how many can fit comfortably inside of it at one time. I've seen people push the limits as to what they can cram inside a ship in all kinds of imaginative ways. But as fun as it is to watch people do it, it rarely ends up being a practical solution or a smart way to transport vehicles. So I'm putting a limit as to what I consider a ship to be able to carry based on what safely fits into the cargo bay. And when I say safely or comfortably fits, I mean that once you've gotten inside of it and powered the vehicle down, you'll still have enough room to be able to get out of it and not be trapped within the cargo bay. Parking the vehicle should also be able to be done in a relatively quick amount of time, and not be something that requires you to have to do a series of three-point turns to accomplish, or some odd maneuver to make it happen, or to have to shear off parts of the vehicle in order to make it fit. There's a lot of technical fits that other YouTubers have done when placing vehicles inside of a ship, but they seem to also conveniently leave out the parts where they've managed to get their cyclone fatally stuck inside of it, or tend to omit the fact that once inside, they can't ever get the vehicle out again. This can misleadingly make people think that you can get more vehicles in the back of a ship than you really can. Okay, so now that I've gotten that disclaimer out of the way, the Cutlass can carry two small vehicles side by side that are roughly the size of a standard Gravlev bike, or one Cyclone. If you're feeling frisky, you can clown car a bunch of gray cats in there as well and still be able to get out and walk around. The number of which really varies depending on the amount of time you're willing to dedicate to doing this. And quite frankly, I ran out of gray cats before I ended up running out of room. And don't even ask me to count these, because that's just not going to happen. If you're a good driver, you can get two cyclones within the cargo bay and be able to get them out again with relative ease. If you park it right, you'll still be able to get out of the cyclone that's parked in the rear and be able to make your way into the ship. A rover like the Ursa or the Lynx is not going to fit, no matter how much you grease up the sides or how much of a running start you end up taking. The Freelancer can fit a number of Grey Cat buggies, several Rangers, or a couple of Gravlev bikes inside of it. And I'm going to address the elephant in the room because I know someone's going to bring this up if I don't and it's that you can technically get a cyclone in the back of a standard freelancer, but only after doing some serious finagling. This involves using one of the ramp's hydraulic lifts as an incline to sneak one of the cyclone's front tires inside of the entrance. And once you do this, it allows you to slip the rest of the vehicle inside as well. It's not going to be pretty, but with a little work and gentle persuading, you can get the vehicle past the rear turret struts and settled nicely into the cargo bay of the ship. And once it's in there, assuming you do manage to get this done without damaging it or the ship, it's going to be stuck inside, permanently. Not only that, but the cyclone fits so snugly within the freelancer's cargo bay that the tires can pin you in between them, leaving you nowhere to go. So it's technically possible to do, but it's completely impractical and I don't even advise you to try it. You can park up to five Grey Cat buggies comfortably into the cargo bay if you line them up in a row with one in front of the other. This allows you to park them quickly and to get them out just as fast again, while providing plenty of room to walk around either side of them. You can fit two Gravlev bikes in the cargo bay if you park them in a row as well. For this example, I first used a Nox and a Dragonfly. If I tried this with all Dragonflies, then it still takes up the same amount of space, and I still can only get two of them in. But I noticed something interesting. Everywhere in the Freelancer that's large enough to fit one Dragonfly could also comfortably house two Noxes. So I tried this again, but this time I loaded it up while only using Noxes, and I managed to get four of them in that same amount of space. In summation, both of these vessels are going to be natural choices for anyone who's looking into acquiring a medium-sized ship, particularly if they want something that fits a multi-purpose role and provides a lot in terms of options. The main thing that differentiates these two ships from one another is their intention. The Freelancer is much more defensively minded, while the Cutlass is more offensively orientated. And the decision as to which one of these two ships that you're most likely going to gravitate towards depends on your particular play style and which career path you intend on pursuing. Everything about the Freelancer is designed for defense, which can be seen in its superior level of shielding, its rear turret placement, 
and in its less responsive handling. It's intended for people who are more interested in play-at-your-own-pace game mechanics. It has a no-nonsense approach to earning UEC, and is a highly dependable, fuel-efficient transporter. The freelancer does an excellent job at upholding the miscredo of being purpose-built for something and excelling at it. The entire Freelancer series is known for being the most fuel-efficient, medium-sized ships in production. They're essentially the equivalent of a finely-tuned, tough-as-nails space truck. And it's still intended to be the largest ship to be able to fit through the smallest jump point. The Freelancer comes with a much wider assortment of amenities for the crew, which is going to increase your overall level of independence and provide a nice boost for the morale of any NPC crew members. Its defensive abilities and internal storage has made it the ship of choice for transporting higher valued cargo through some of the more dangerous trade routes. While other ships are going to be forced to stick with the main shipping lanes, which are going to be safer, but they're also going to take a lot longer to get from point A to point B. While the freelancer pilot would be better equipped to take on riskier shortcuts and have that extra level of protection to see them through it. But the freelancer is not restricted to just hauling cargo. It can act as an independent transport, it can be used to do some light scavenging, seeming how the cargo bay can be used to lock down anything that fits on it. Its weapons and two medium shields allows it to be a contender when taking on any other medium-sized threats. And it can transport a few gravlevs or rangers in the back, or even a good number of greycats. It's not only a good medium freighter, but it's heavily defended, has above average weapons for a ship of its size, and can double as a solid transport ship. The Cutlass is a vessel that's a much better fit for aggressively minded pilots. It's more precise in its handling, it has a higher acceleration rate, and maneuvers better. The dorsal turret is located more to the front of the ship, which gives it a better view of whatever the pilot's aiming at. It has a larger missile loadout, and it has a much more durable hull than your average Drake ship tends to have. The Cutlass has a smaller permanent deck crew than the Freelancer, but it can hold a much larger strike force of up to six additional people. This feature allows it to double as a decent dropship or as a platform to launch a raiding party from. The cargo bay may have less SCU space than the Freelancer, but its wider design allows it to be able to carry a larger vehicle than the standard Freelancer can handle, which so far includes all the various types of tumbral cyclones. It's a one-ship pirate fleet on a minimalistic scale. It has more than enough firepower to be able to disable a vessel on its own, and it has enough room to launch a good-sized raiding party from. When used as a dropship, it can carry up to six soldiers into the field, and carry a vehicle like the Cyclone or several Gravlev bikes. It has lockers so that your raiding party can grab better armaments and equip themselves with heavy armor. It's more than a little obvious at this point that a complete Drake lineup creates the quintessential pirate fleet, with the Cutlass falling somewhere between the Buccaneer and the Caterpillar in both performance and in the role that it plays within such a fleet. In addition to piracy, the Cutlass can also be used for doing any number of legitimate jobs like cargo hauling, delivery missions, combat missions of all kinds, and staging FPS ground assaults from. The Cutlass Black can be flown solo, which still gives you access to four size 3 weapons, or it can be flown with a full crew of nine. This makes it not only a good light cargo hauler, attack ship, but also a good drop ship and a light vehicle transport. The Cuddy may give up a lot with regards to onboard amenities, but it more than makes up for it with its offensive abilities. So in the end, if you're interested in getting something that's more of a space truck, that can handle the day-to-day -day grind, is more self-sufficient, and is designed to be more defensive in nature, then the standard Freelancer is going to be the vessel for you. But if you're more interested in getting a well-rounded ship that's going to be better at going on the attack, no matter if you're alone, with a group, or as part of a fleet, then the Cutlass Black is going to be the vessel of choice for you. I've been your host, Law of the West. Thanks for watching, and take care.